morning. Welcome to St. George's Episcopal Church in the Center for Art and Spirit. I invite you to take a moment to center yourself and remind yourself that, um, that the sounds and the feelings and the vibrations and the smells and all of the senses that you can use to experience the space you are in right now. To remind yourself that where you are is where God is, and that where you are is where God chooses to meet you this morning. And the sounds that you will hear um, from our end are a really giant dog going by, and Ursa is still awake, so a, now a one-year-old making noises, and um, Ann Brammer Johnson, who's my mom, is over there with Ursa, and they're eating some Cheerios. This is Bruce Johnson, my dad, who's usually joining us um, the way that you're joining us this morning. So um, we were able to quarantine ourselves for a couple of weeks, and now we're able to co-quarantine, so it's a wonderful gift. Um, if you are joining us for the first time, welcome to St. George's. Um, Please put a note in the chat so that we know, or a comment, um, so that we know that you're visiting and we can welcome you. Um, <clears throat> our, all the information that you need for the service this morning is on our website, which is stgeorgeswavl.org, and that's stgeorgeswavl. Um, that's where you can find our bulletin, and the readings and the songs are sent out in an email uh, every Saturday. <clears throat> so now let's see who's in the room. Alexandra Kalia, good morning. And I don't recognize your name, so are you visiting? If you're visiting, hello, welcome. Regina is here, good morning. Uh, Kelsey says, good morning, and hi, Johan. Johan, you got a greeting. He's happy. Uh, Willie Israel says, good morning, good morning, Willie. Barbara Peterson and Lyle Peterson, good morning. Good morning, Noel. Good to see you. Good morning, Barbara Lassiter. And Barbara Peterson says, good to see you, Bruce and Anne. Regina says, good morning. Alexandra is new. Good morning, Alexandra. Welcome. Let us know if you need any help. Um, it's good to have you with us this morning. We actually have been able to connect with a bunch of new folks um, since all the quarantine pandemic stuff hit. So that's been, a, that's been an unusual or surprising to me gift. Um, morning, Molly and Marsha. Good morning, folks. Jillian says, hi, everybody. Hey, Jillian, good to be with you. Uh, our opening hymn this morning is, Oh, the Deep, Deep Love of Jesus. And it's verses one, two, and three. drop something.
Denny has popped in. Good morning, all, and welcome, Alexandra. Good morning, Denny. I miss you. I miss all of you. Um, good to be with you. Did I mention that Bruce Johnson is my dad? Did I say that? This is my father, <laughs> in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> uh, it's so nice to have um, a, a congregation that is that is uh, flesh and blood right here in in the church, in the house. Um, And you don't have to read the responses, but if you do, you can. Or if you, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Another deep breath. Mm. We are not physically together. And we are definitely not not together. We are together. Blessed be our God. Forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to sing um, the Gloria with us. It's three times. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia. May God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen, Amen. Um, I was gonna I was thinking I was gonna do the I would do the first reading read the psalm together and then you do the second reading and I'll do the gospel okay. our first reading comes from the letter <laughs> not the letter our first reading comes from the book of Exodus, <clears throat> beginning at the 14th chapter. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land and the waters divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the army, the Egyptian army, into panic. He clogged their chariot wall wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the waters may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. 
Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant, Moses. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> I invite you to join us in reading uh, Psalm 114, and we will read this in unison. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When, when Israel, Israel came, came out, out of Egypt, Egypt the house of Jacob from a from people of strange speech, speech. Judah, Judah became the sanctuary of the Lord, and Israel the dominion of God. The sea beheld it and fled. Jordan turned and went back. The mountains skipped like rams, and the little hills like young sheep. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you turned back? You mountains that you skipped like rams, you little hills like young sheep. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob who turned the hard rock into a pool of water and flintstone into a flowing spring. <coughs> Paul's letter to the book of Romans, chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions, some believe in it, eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day observe it in honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For this end Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the living and the dead. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. Hear what the Lord is saying to his people. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. <coughs> The gospel refrain that we use <laughs> versus on TV. Uh, reading a couple more comments. Good morning from Becky Everett and Henry. Good morning. David Johnson, maybe even Melody, is also on versus on TV. Good morning, family. Good morning, Uncle David. Good to be with you. Thank you for coming to church with us. Um, our gospel refrain is uh, begins, help us attend to your words, O God, and ends, help us respond to your words. Thank you. <clears throat> so together. Help us attend to your words, O God. The holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ According to Matthew, glory, glory to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? 
as many as seven times? <clears throat> Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. Johan, buddy, go to bed, buddy. Go to bed. Right, Johan is lying down on the cord. Go to bed. Go to bed. Good boy. Good boy. The complication of having your sanctuary in your living room. <sighs> Not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. <clears throat> For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, after he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves heard what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to the Lord all that, they had, take, all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him <clears throat> and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in his anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he could pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or your sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, you, to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Now help us respond together. Help us respond to your words, O God. <clears throat> See if my power cord let, lets me do this, or the rather the battery. Um, I might have to scoot around again. I don't know, when I'm sitting on the couch, I feel like I feel like y'all are farther away than when I'm in the kitchen. <laughs> so, um... <sighs> May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. Yesterday, um, I participated in a diocesan retreat, um, asking questions about um, how to better live into the mandate to become God's beloved community, to, um, to become a community that is worthy of saying that we are trying to follow God's lead, and especially and particularly around um, issues of racism and white supremacy. Uh, our church has a long and uh, um, not very lovely um, a history of um, racial injustice. Uh, many of our churches were built by the hands of folks who were enslaved. Um, and a lot of our money comes from that legacy as well. And um, our leader yesterday asked us to do the work of imagining, um, imagining how the world might be different in our diocese, how we as a diocese might act differently. Um, sorry, this is so weird. Sometimes I'm just really tired of this pandemic and this whole not being with you guys. So I could see my dad's head like right behind the, <laughs> the phone um, instead of having him right here. Um, 
Anyway, yeah, this feels a little bit more like y'all all are on the couch with us, so that feels good. Um, so, um, I'm actually just not even going to look at my computer anymore, and we'll just see what happens, Holy Spirit. Um, as we were talking yesterday, our leader asked us to imagine what the diocese could do differently in the future. Um, and uh, one of the things that came up, we broke into smaller groups, and then when we came back into the larger group, we each, you know, had come up with these different ideas. And almost each little group shared with the larger group that storytelling was one of the things that they imagined in this future for the diocese, for this region, um, for this expression of, of uh, the Episcopal Church. And I was thinking about that, and thinking about that in terms of the story that we hear this morning from the book of Exodus. Johan, buddy, you need to go to bed. Sorry. Johan, go to bed. Go to bed. He keeps lying down on the power cords and then getting tangled in them. As do you. Sorry. Okay. Um, this is going to be the longest sermon, folks. <laughs> this is going to be me readjusting. <laughs> um, so storytelling. Um, one of the uh, examples that the that the um that the leader of the of the retreat reverend tammy forte logan shared with us was a short video um of a woman talking about the danger of civility and she shared this this story of living with uh, a woman who was was a neighbor and then needed a place to live and lived with her for a year and a half um who would would come home at the end of the day and just be just irate, enraged, really frustrated, having had just countless encounters um, and, and really struggling um, as, as a woman who was experiencing poverty, um, as someone living in, um, in brown skin and um, as someone who was also struggling with uh, some mental illness. And the speaker, the woman who's telling this story, was saying that at first she felt like this this roommate needed to um, needed to censor herself, to sort of package her story, package her day in a way that was palatable to her, in a way that felt civilized. I think often we dismiss the stories of folks um, when we feel like they're not packaged in the way that we are comfortable with, that they're not um, presented to us in a way that is not challenging and not threatening to us. So I bring that up because this story from the book of Exodus is one of the stories in the Bible that I find unpalatable. I don't like the idea that, um, that God is tossing Egyptians into the sea. I don't like the idea that God is miring them down in the mud of the sea floor. I don't like the idea that God is the one who tells Moses to stretch out his hand again, not to liberate, but to kill and drown. And I don't like the idea that in the morning, as the sun rises, the Israelites rejoice because they see the bodies of the chariot drivers and the soldiers washing up on the shore. That's unpalatable to me. The dominant culture in the US values objectivity. We deeply value this idea that somehow we can step out of the muck and messiness of whatever the situation is. And with cool heads and totally unaffected not impacted by what's going on, we can make judgments and claims and we can, um, we can decide what is good and what is bad about another situation. We have that sense of perspective. I think we even, um, I feel like it's even in the ways that we talk to each other, you know, to say, you know, I really can't be objective about this. And maybe that says something about the my class background and my educational background that I use words like that, but um, you know, I'm, 
I'm too much in my head around this, or I'm, I'm too in it to be able to see it. That sense of perspective and objectivity is something that we really value. And I say we because I am part of that dominant um, culture in the US. Sorry, Alan's also on church right now. Highlander's homecoming is this weekend, so Urs is going down for a nap. The dog's right here, my dad's right here, and Alan is laughing really loudly um, while I'm in there. And I don't multitask well. <laughs> grace, grace, grace. Um, the truth is that claiming that we are objective is sort of a power play. It's not true. We are all subjective. We are all in it to one extent or another. And from that position of desiring to be objective, that is the culture out of which I read texts like this text from the, from the book of Exodus. I look at it and I don't just think about the Israelites. I think about the Egyptians. I think about it from a distance. I think about it in a way that is as little emotion as possible for me. And that is the context out of which I'm, I'm upset by the violence that this story attributes to God. This is a story that is unpalatable to me. Because I, if I recognize my actual situation within this story, my actual subjective experience with this story, I'm the Egyptians and sometimes the Israelites. If I'm going to put myself in that story, which inevitably we do when we read it. So I'm going to, I'm going to sympathize with the Egyptians. And I'm perhaps from that, from that distance, from that um, distance from the story, from the context of the story, I'm going to think that, um, that it's unjust for the people of Israel to tell a story like this in which they attribute violence to God. This was lifted up yesterday, and I feel like it's important to, to hear this morning because there are a lot of unpalatable stories that people are telling about their own experiences, their own lives. There are a lot of responses to those lives, responses out of anger, out of desperation, out of decades and centuries and millennia of oppression that may not be pal palatable to folks who, like me, stand in the center of power, or at least close-ish to it. I don't experience the day-to-day -day oppression of housing discrimination, of employment discrimination, of discrimination around funding, discrimination around just people's people's assumptions of who I am because of the color of my skin. I actually, I am surrounded by assumptions of those things that benefit me, that make people assume that I am educated, that I am intelligent, that I am capable. So I can't read this story subjectively. But what I can do, and what I encourage all of us to try to do, is to recognize the places where we feel uncomfortable because of someone else's story, whether that be the way they're telling their story, or the content of their story, or the claims that they are making in their story that we disagree with, or feel challenged by, or uncomfortable. Because those might be the stories that we really need to listen to. Those might be the stories that are shouted because they have never been heard at a, at a different volume. Those are the stories that are spoken emphatically and with profound challenge and maybe even some violence because they have been continued to be ignored and overlooked and are now being demand, are demanding to be heard. Amen.
Our liturgical affirmation is found in your bulletin. And if you don't have a bulletin and you um, didn't hear the first time I mentioned it right at the very, very beginning, you can find our bulletin on our website, stgeorgeswavl.org. Together. You, O oh God, are supreme and holy. You create our world and give us life. Your purpose overarches everything we do. You have always been with us. You are God. You, O oh God, are infinitely generous, good beyond all measure. You came to us before we came to you. You have revealed and proved your love for us in Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again. You are with us now. You are God. You, O oh God, are Holy Spirit. You empower us to be your gospel in the world. You reconcile and heal. You overcome death. You are our God. We worship you. Amen. As we move into a time of prayer, I invite you to um, put a prayer in the comments. Um, that's the little speech bubble thing at the bottom. You can click on it and type and then hit enter or return and it should pop up um, in a way that we can see. And I'll read those at the end of the prayers of the people. But um, I think this is something that we did last week and it was really helpful for me to remember and to, and to really feel closer to you all that, um, that we can pray for each other, not just in general ways, but in very specific ways. Um, and that we are, that we are attending to one another's stories and realities and experiences um, in these very, very difficult times. So please share those with us. Um, petitions, gratitudes, joyfulness, struggles, any and all are welcome. Together, let us pray for the world, asking that the God of love and mercy hear our prayer. Can you read this one? For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Jose, our, pre our bishop, Aaron, our priest, and for all clergy and people, God of love and mercy, Hear our prayer. For all global, national, state, and local leaders, and for all in positions of power, that they be held accountable to the people impacted by their decisions. God of love and mercy. Hear our prayer. For this city of Asheville, and for every city and community, and for those who live in them, God of love and mercy. Hear our prayer. For the Oh, sorry. For God's good earth and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, God of love and mercy. Hear our prayer. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, God of love and mercy. Hear our prayer. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them. God of love and mercy. Hear our prayer. For all young people, protect and guide them that they may grow in love and hope and may find your peace and grace throughout their lives. God of love and mercy. Hear our prayer. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and for all the departed, God of love and mercy. Hear our prayer. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, God of love and mercy. Hear our prayer. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, God of love and mercy. Hear our prayer. In the communion of the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer.
God, we ask your blessing on everyone here and give gratitude for the prayers of this congregation, for Mother Jean. We pray especially for Ava, Noel's dear friend in Memphis, who has tested positive for COVID-19. Be with her and her family and friends as they worry and as they struggle. Strengthen her body and soul and be with Noel. Barbara Peterson, Mother Barbara, lifts up those who are suffering in the fires on the West Coast. Pray for the displaced, for the anxious. We also lift up teachers and educators. Be with them right now as they navigate these strange times. Be with the children and the parents of our creative peacemakers after school program. I ask that you be also with Noel, with her service corps volunteer, with everyone in the Deaverview community. Barbara Lassiter lifts up our neighbors here and abroad, that they might find joy and peace in these difficult days. Kelsey asks for courage for the Blue Ridge Service Corps. Give thanks for my sister-in-law, Jill, as she completes sometime around now or the next several hours a 100-mile trail run race. I hope she's okay. Hope she's breathing not super smoky air, that she's feeling strong and cared for. Kelsey asks for prayers for making family for Heather and Kelsey. And gratitude for the new folks who have found their way to St. George's and for the ways that they have um, welcomed us with open arms from a distance and been welcomed by us. We're still building community together. Together, God of love and mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Amen. We shift now to the confession and the absolution. Time to reconcile ourselves to one another as we approach God's table. Take a moment to recognize what may be in the way, what may be preventing you or holding you back from being fully part of God's beloved community, of God's beloved family. Together. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other and in ourselves and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Mm. Lord, peace, love. peace be with you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, send us a comment in the peace. Pass the peace to yourself, especially if you are on your own this morning. Pass the peace to the folks who share your home if you are not. Pass the peace to your pets. 
they need it. We need their peace. Pass the peace out your windows to your neighbors and your community uh, and this world that so desperately needs us and needs your peace and peace in general. Um, and feel free to drop a comment to us in that little speech bubble um, telling us, uh, passing, passing us your peace. Barbara Lassiter sends God's peace and love to each of you. Peace, Barbara. Noel says, peace and love, virtual hugs. Peace, Noel. Um, peace from Moog and from Denny. He said they send peace outward towards all. Peace, Denny. Peace, Moog. Peace and love from Heather and Kelsey. Peace. Jillian says, peace of God to all. Peace, Jillian. Peace from Everett, Becky, Becky Everett and Henry. Peace. Regina says, peace to all. Barbara Peterson says, peace from Joseph, Lyle, Higgins and Barbara. And I can't believe that Wes didn't pass us the peace, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara Lassiter says, peace, curly top. Alexandra says, peace to all. Peace, Alexandra. It's so glad you're with us this morning. Buddy, peace. Lots of people passing you peace. Joe says, peace to all on a rainy Sunday from Pennsylvania. Peace, Joe. Willie says, peace to all and happy birthday, Ursa. Oh, thank you. Noel says, happy birthday to Ursa. His first birthday was on Thursday. And he's one year old. I should just tell people he's three and he's not three. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have uh, just a couple announcements. Oh, peace from Wes in the barn. Okay, good. <laughs> peace, Wes. Wes is a horse. It's a beautiful horse. Um, just a couple announcements. We have a social hour on Zoom on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. And I think last week, it was one person that might have been our fault because it might have been hard to get on there um, but it's the same link every single week and it's on zoom and the link is in your weekly emails so if you don't have that link um, shoot me an email or shoot Sarah an email um, and our email addresses and our phone numbers are on our website st. George's wavl dot org um, but Folks asked for this hour of um, fellowship, and so it's happening. So all we need is folks for fellowship. <laughs> That's you. Um, so let us know if there's a way to connect. And I know that Tuesdays don't work for everybody, and people are Zoomed out, but anyway. Um, Wednesday, Zoom discussions are continuing. We're talking about racism, and we have been for months. Um, last week we started talking about the really concrete actions that we can take as a church and it was a great discussion and there are going to be opportunities to participate coming your way. Um, it's been pretty small attendance which is fine but it is the kind of thing that since we're talking about this in an ongoing way uh, during the season of Pentecost um, you can totally drop in. You won't have missed anything that you can't be caught up on. Um, and uh, and we would love to have you um, and that is no matter where you are in your journey around all the things that are going on in the world right now and around um, confronting white supremacy and racism and um, and I would say if you're if you're uncomfortable with it or if it's unpalatable to you please come please come you go to your grandma my butt um, and oh and coffee hour we have coffee hour every Sunday um, around 1130 right after this service it's the same coffee hour link every single Sunday 
And if you don't have that, shoot me a text um, or send me an email and I'll check, I'll do my best to actually check my email during coffee hour so that if you need the link, I will get it to you. Um, and that email address is on our website, but I'll give it to you here. Johan, no barking. It's uh, Aaron, E-R-I-N, Saint, all spelled out, S-A-I-N-T, George at gmail.com. Hey, Janet. Good to see you. Good morning. Welcome back. Alrighty. That is it for announcements. As we um, move towards the table, I encourage you to think about the ways that you can um, support um, the church and support God's people with your finances, with your time, um, with your talents. Um, if you can give to us financially, that would be helpful. Uh, these are strange times, but we also know that a lot of folks are unemployed and need support and help. And so um, if you can, please give generously. Uh, if you give to us, thank you. If you give to others, thank you. Um, our website, you can hit the donate button there. Um, there's also a link on the weekly email to donate um, at a distance, or you can just go old fashioned and send a check to the church, which is helpful too. Johan, go to bed. For those of you who don't know, Johan takes up about half of the size of the living room, which is why I'm sort of strict on him. Thank you. is my God and I will praise him, the God of my people and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty chariots of Pharaoh and his army as he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a storm. Your right hand, O oh Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O oh Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O oh Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness? Awesome and renowned and worker of wonders. You stretched forth your right hand. The earth swallowed them all. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With your might, you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them. 
place you have made for yourself, O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your right hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and No, that's what I was asking. Just go ahead and bring them out too. It'd be great. Thanks. And Bruce, if you don't mind, if you could scroll down when I need to scroll down. Okay. Thank you. I figured he'd be happier if he could see it. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, O oh Holy God, source of life. Mama, I'll take it. Thank you. Source of life and fountain of mercy, you have filled us in all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels, and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, are you gracious God creator of the universe and giver of life you formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love you gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace but we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves we would not see your goodness in the world around us and so we violated your creation abused one another and rejected your love yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people through sarah and abraham you called us into covenant with you you delivered us from slavery sustained us in the wilderness 
and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus, born into the human family and dwelling among us. He revealed your glory, giving himself freely to death on the cross. He triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus took the bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share in these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your children, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be your name. name. Your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Friends, beloved, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Of Christ, the cup of salvation. Mm. <laughs> You're so small. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Johan, blessing. Ursa, may you know the power of God's love ever present in your life and ever close to you in the arms of those who love you and in the one 
the maid here. See if Alan wants communion. Combine our virtual worlds. I invite you to take a moment, and whether it's through consuming unconsecrated bread and wine or juice, or um, or consecrated, um, or simply through recognizing the presence of God in your life, I invite you to do that now. This is how children experience the blood of Christ. They stick their hands in it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, when you are ready, I invite you to pray with us. Together, God of abundance, you have you fed, fed us, us with, with the bread, bread of life and, life and the cup of salvation. salvation. You have you united us with, with Christ and one another. And you, you have made, made us one with all your people, people in heaven and on earth. Now send, send us, us forth, forth in the power of your spirit, spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Holy Eternal, Eternal Majesty, Holy Incarnate God, Holy Incarnate Word, Holy Abiding Spirit, bless you forevermore. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, and I encourage you to sing with us. We're just going to sing two, two verses. you pick him up? Thank you. Whew, sorry about that, guys.
join us for coffee hour. We'd love to see you all there. Let us know if you need the link. Go in peace to love and serve our God. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Blessings on your week. Bye. Wave goodbye. <laughs> Bye.